Um, came out to Haya Kia Pier for the tasting. I didn't know what to feed them, but I had we had uh, in that day, and so I guess I had made them a like a poio salad, yeah, a little French salad, and then we did taco poke. So for the galley event on the fourth, we're doing the same thing, but just kind of wanted to change it up and do it a little bit differently. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna take this. We're cleaning it right now, and right now we're just trying to getting out, get out on the owl, get all the guts out. So we turn the head inside out, peel off the guts part, and then actually just gonna get it, I cut it. How'd you learn how to do that? Uh, by watching, watching the elders, watching uh, the chefs that I work for. When I think Kyoko, she has, she has a washing machine that she uses just for her hair. Really? Yeah, like they, a small one? In the garage and then they throw it inside and just let it go. And it tenderizes it, moves around, beats it. But another one, uh, okay, Dave Caldera actually taught me this from now on. Is get a bucket, clean everything out, and then just, just beat the hell out of it inside the pot. <laughs> <laughs> sort of contemporary restaurant method, you know, but for this, you thought it the hay actually started to change color a little bit. What does That's that what mean? happens when it, it comes into contact with fresh water. Oh, yeah. so the salt water... The salt water is what keeps it it's natural. You actually, like, seafood and uh, fish like that, you really don't want to, uh, you don't want to rinse it, especially like, like ahi like that way. When you fillet it, and then if you get it wet, with uh -huh. fresh water, it'll start to break down. And that's why the Japanese they have, they have special like sashimi paper, yeah? Stuff that keeps it dry, keeps it from oxidizing. It's really, really important. Keep all your seafood cold, but keep it away from fresh water. This guy, what it was, was it was in my cooler with, it, with some ice. And it just thawed out a little bit, the ice thawed, and then overnight it just started to kind of affect the final flavor, but it's just an indicator of fresh water. Mm. So these are about two count. and a half pounds, uh, three pounders. Uh -huh. uh, cooking up here, these guys provide the best like texture and a lot of gelatin. Yes, I guess. <laughs> so any bigger it wouldn't be so good. Too old. Well, it's just or... The older they get, same with any 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 animal or things like that. The older they get, the tougher yeah. they get. And then you don't want you don't want this to be a baby killer, so you don't want to get the real ones. <laughs> <laughs> you get something in the middle. How do you know when the hell has been beaten out of it? How do you? Well, yeah, you can feel it. You can feel the slime. Uh, you know the hay has a natural natural slime to it. And then, so I can tell by feeling it like this, that, you know, I'm getting it off. This hair it comes from uh, the, from the Ile Cabello and her father. The majority of my hair comes from cutting the side. So what are you peeling, painstakingly? So I'm peeling uh, current tomatoes. <laughs> the skin. The skin has a little bite, I think with delicate dishes, we're not doing a whole lot, just take the time, take them out. Kind of like when someone says, peel me a grape. Well, I've done that, I've done that. Okay, so today we're making toko poke, and uh, not quite the one you would see at the market, but it's real, real similar, same flavors. All we did was we took the he'e. And this hee comes from Hi'ile Cavello and her father out of Hei'e Kaneohe. Took it, cooked it low and slow, just as she got tender. Then we cut the legs off and the rest of the body parts. Stuffed it in this coffee can over here. And once it's set up, sliced it nice and thin. So it's all the same flavors. Get it out. So this is just to uh, show you Sesame, chili pepper, a little bit of dashi. Some red onions. Hoyo.
And this is Bakha. Bakha is a Southeast Asian variety of taro and actually one of the few that you can eat raw. Mm. So, this is it. Wow. So, right, the oha is like this. You got this down here, the quorum, this whole thing comprises the uli. And then the Hawaiian variety, which is a uh, Colocasia esculenta, it can't be eaten raw because you have these calcium oxalate crystals that run through the entire plant and then they cause your throat to become real itchy, you have a reaction to it. So you need a combination of both heat and moisture to break it down. This baby doesn't need that. No more crystals, so you can eat it raw. Finally, we're going to finish up with a, a few of those current tomatoes. And why those tomatoes? Current tomatoes are kind of the last of the season. We're, in, we're pretty much in the winter already, so. As far as tomatoes go, it's more of a summer thing. Uh, Whole Farms it still makes a really good product and then this is the last of it. And then finally, just a little bit of some smoked meat. Find some roasted mac nuts. There you go.